Uh, Senator Crapo. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my first question is for both Ms. Newman and Mr. Kazukas. Uh, as public trustees, you would be entrusted with providing an unbiased and independent review of financial status of the trust funds, maintaining the credibility of the reports submitted to Congress is vital. Their analysis and underlying economic assumptions are used extensively by public and private entities to evaluate not only the programs themselves, but also overall government spending. These reports do not include policy recommendations, nor do they advise on policy. The public trustee positions do not provide platforms for anyone on either side of the ideological spectrum to espouse their personal policy viewpoints. They are tasked, quite simply, to provide objective, dispassionate accounts of exactly what is happening with the trust funds. Dr. Newman and Mr. Kazukas, will you commit to maintaining an independent, nonpartisan, and objective oversight role, if confirmed? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I'd like to go now to uh, Ms. Rollinson. Uh, as we talked in my office, uh, one of the troubling concerns that I've seen is a recent trend that there, I, from my perspective, is a willingness of the IRS and Treasury to ignore the plain language in enacted statutes when issuing regulatory guidance. For example, in the case of the IRA's new EV tax credit, the IRS and Treasury proposed rules that had no statutory basis and simply ignored the statutory deadline for issuing guidance, which had the effect of temporarily preventing new requirements from taking effect and allowing scores of credits to be claimed inappropriately. There are other recent instances where the IRS and Treasury have ignored unambiguously stated effective dates and delayed certain provisions from taking effect. As I said earlier, I know that you were not in the government at the time these actions were taken, but do you believe that it is proper for the IRS to issue guidance that is clearly inconsistent with statute? Thank you for raising this. I, I was going to just say no, but I will, <laughs> I'll elaborate. Um, I, uh, the Chief Counsel Office is very important in terms of making sure that the laws passed by Congress are interpreted fairly and that guidance is issued quickly. That's how we cut down on disputes. That's how we make sure that the benefits that Congress is intending people to get are, in fact, available. And so, um, although I don't, don't know um, fully the the exact regulations that you're talking about, it would be, if I'm lucky enough to be confirmed, it would be a big priority of mine to make sure that the Office of Chief Counsel is advising fully on what we think the proper interpretation of the law is. Well, thank you. Then, if confirmed, how will you approach, and I think you've answered this, but I'd like you to answer it again. If confirmed, how will you approach a situation where the statute is clear, but the administration seeks a different outcome? whether based on claims of administrative complexity or political expediency? That's, that's a very important question. What, what's interesting is how often tax law is not that clear. But to the extent Understood. if, if uh, I, I agree with you that to the extent the tax law is clear, that we need to stay within the parameters of the law. And I also, and this was my experience when I was there before and would anticipate it being my experience if I'm lucky enough to be confirmed, I do think there are healthy debates among lawyers as to what, what words mean. But again, the Office of Chief Counsel's role would be to advocate for what we think the law says. And as a side matter, not a side matter, but equally important, making sure that the rules that are passed are administrable. And that would be my focus if I'm lucky enough to be confirmed. Well, thank you. Uh, very quickly, one last question before my time runs out. I'm also very concerned about specific instances where the IRS unilaterally, unilaterally acts without statutory authority, where there is no language to be clear or, or unclear about. Pursuant to the administration's directive, for example, the IRS has recently begun building a program to prepare tax returns and give tax advice, allowing the IRS to act as tax collector, tax enforcer, and tax preparer. That puts them at the center of each stage of the process. And even though it was jettisoned from the partisan IRA, 
Many of us worry that the IRS will move unilaterally into requiring systematic and deeply intrusive reporting on Americans' bank accounts without statutory authorization. My question is, do you believe the IRS has the legal authority to prepare tax returns or to track deeply in Americans' bank accounts without congressional authorization? Thank you. you you're r raising what I think are two separate issues. I'll address th them separately. One is the what I believe you're talking about is direct file. And the chief counsel certainly wouldn't be making a policy call as to whether it's a good idea to have direct file, but would absolutely be um, engaged in answering the question of whether we thought there was authority. And so I, if I am confirmed, I look forward to understanding what the thinking was um, as the IRS came to the conclusion that they believe they have the authority since I understand they are moving forward with a pilot program. All right, thank you. I see my time's way over expired. I, I thank my colleague, Senator Grafley. Yeah.